The first question was, how much is shock impacting pH? Should pH be lowered under 7.5 before adding shock into a pool? Okay, so let's define shock first of all. And um, there's various definitions of shock. And it used to mean adding a kind of a mega dose of chlorine um, to get rid of chloramines and combined chlorine and perhaps even a, an outbreak of algae. And so uh, that was kind of a super chlorination. Then with the advent of non-chlorine shock, which is for the most part monopersulfate, um, the MPS people said you can shock with their non-chlorine shock. And that was to remove uh, chloramines and combined chlorine, but didn't kill anything. So um, if we're talking about a shock that is um, with chlorine, then uh, the purposes are to get rid of uh, some organic or, or cellular organism, such as bacteria or algae, or it's to, to get rid of um, chloramines or uh, combined chlorine. And if that's the case, then um, a shock is a shock. And um, if you put in enough chlorine, you will overcome the, or get to the ratio of chlorine to ammonia or chlorine to chloramine that will destroy the chloramine. And so you can calculate that. And if you if you do a free and total chlorine test, and if they're not the same, then the difference is combined chlorine. And if you multiply that times 10, that is the dose of chlorine you need to overcome the, the combined chlorine to get to the proper ratio. And so that's the way we calculate it. So if you have um, 0.5 parts per million of combined chlorine, you need to add 5 parts per million of free chlorine as a dose to the pool to overcome or get the proper ratio of chlorine to, to chloramine to get rid of it. So that's how you do it. And with the amount of cyanuric acid that you will have in most pools, which will be at least more than 30 parts per million, um, the pH of the pool doesn't necessarily matter anymore. And the reason is it, it mattered before when we thought that pH determined the percentage of HOCl and OCl that's in the pool. And we thought that that was fixed by the pH. But in fact, it is not. It's most of the chlorine, in fact, 97% of the chlorine that's in the water is being bound to cyanuric acid. Uh, if the cyanuric acid is anything more than 30. And as it gets higher, it's even less. So you can get to the point where you've got maybe 150 parts per million of cyanuric acid that you only have 1% of the chlorine available. And then the pH of the water matters to an extent because the other two things that matter is the, the cyanuric acid level and the chlorine concentration determines how the percentage that's available. So it's, it's quite complex and it's not as simple as we have tried to make it in past years. And so um, the, the rule is 10 times the, uh, the combined chlorine level is the shock level you need to, to, to get to, to get rid of chloramines. Um, and if you're, having, if you're having an algae problem, then we even go higher than that. And my recommendation has always been a chlorine level that is 40% of your cyanuric acid level or 25 parts per million of free chlorine to get rid of algae. And then you must maintain that level. 
and those are the key words, maintain that level for 24 to 48 hours. And it requires you making multiple uh, tests for chlorine during that time to make sure the chlorine level is up because the chlorine will consume will be consumed by the algae and and as it does the chlorine level goes down so you need to top it top it off and get it back up to that that 40% or 20 25 ppm and maintain it and then when you get at the same chlorine reading from for a period of 8 hours if the chlorine reading does not change in an eight-hour period, that means everything's dead in the pool. So, but if it drops by four or five parts per million, everything's not dead yet. So you have to keep going until that chlorine reading doesn't change. So it's a little bit more complex than just, you know, what pH levels should I have in the pool when I shock? Uh, that's a good question, but it's it's a much more complex answer than that.